Hey, hey, party people. In this video, I want to talk to you about designing clothes and composition specifically for illustration. Now, usually, okay, those of you who follow my channel know that I'm a designer first and an illustrator for design purposes usually, but I do get a lot of freelance requests for just straight up illustration work and I just enjoy illustration for illustration's sake anyway. And so in this video, I'm gonna talk you guys through how I design for purely illustration to push and elevate the illustration for illustration's sake and not as design communication, um, thinking about fabrics and you know construction and customers and stuff like that. When you're designing one figure or illustrating one figure, that's pretty easy. You develop a pose and then you put a dress on her or whatever outfit that kind of goes with the pose to give the attitude that you want. And you know, you crop it kind of nice and you're good to go, right? But there are a few other things to consider when you're doing a multi-figure lineup. Just as an aside, if you're more interested in how to do you know, the logistics more of a multi-figure lineup for a design portfolio, go watch my fashion design process video. In that one, the lineup is all the figures are the same size. They're design croquis. The figures are all about 12 inches tall. They show off the collection. And I talk about how to arrange things to show off the collection. This is just going to be like, hey, make it look pretty. Yeah. So let's talk about a few design principles. Number one, whenever you have an illustration, you want to think cropping. Are you going to have the whole figure in a, the sea of the paper or are you going to crop? This one, I've marked off with masking tape the size of my paper. So I'm cropping off at the legs. I'm cropping off part of her face on the biggest figure. Never crop at a joint. It's going to be a little bit more difficult when you have a lineup like this where there's so many different sizes but this is true whether you're doing one figure two figures or 12 figures never crop right at the knee mid thigh is better here i'm gonna be right above the knee right here you know it's gonna cut at the knee but you know i'm going to definitely put her in an outfit where you can't see that knee getting cut off here, if I put her in a mini or something, that's okay because the cropping is nice, but I don't want you know, her to be in shorts and then you see her kneecap sliced in half. You don't want to cut off at the ankle, which is fine. Even the smallest figures here, they're all about mid-calf. Don't cut off right at, <laughs> right at the chin. It looks a little bit weird. We're gonna have to fuss with this a little bit. You know, don't crop right at the elbows. Don't cut off right at the crotch. They end up looking kind of like long torso because you don't know where the crotch is. Don't cut off right at the wrist. One time <laughs> I had a student who hated drawing hands, which, you know, never mind. Rewind. Almost all my students hate drawing hands, but I had one that particularly hated them. And so one day <laughs> she drew this figure. She was doing this sort of thing, whatever. And she cropped it so that her wrist was right at the edge of the paper and you didn't see what her hand was doing. And then, of course, her other hand was like back here. Nobody could see it. But she had literally put her wrist right at the edge of the paper. And I'm like, yeah, no. So always, you know, like if you have one that's going off to the side, don't crop it like right here at the armhole. Second thing to consider in a multi-figure illustration is this concept in, that I teach in color and design class called unity and variety. Unity and variety is not a zoism. It is a color and design term. This book is the textbook I used to teach from, uh, Designing with Color, Concepts and Applications by Jim, uh, Chris, Doros and J.R. Watson. I used to co-teach, not co-teach, excuse me. I used to teach the same school with J.R., who is an excellent color and design teacher. You know, unity and variety, that is the core of a well-merchandised collection, okay? A well-merchandised collection, it, it evolves around, it revolves around a central theme, right? Mm -hmm. We have our inspiration, we have our core concept that kind of is the umbrella for the whole collection, right? But you have to have variation 
and different styles and different cuts within that concept for the collection to look interesting and for different people with different tastes and different bodies to purchase items from, right? That's the essence of it. So here you have this um, Cecil Beaton photograph. And so you have this analogous color scheme, the red, red, violet, violet, and various tints, shades, tones, and mutes of the, there's a very flaming red, purple, crazy, you know, color story. You have the basic umbrella theme of these um, Italian Victorian costumes. Okay, they all are all under this umbrella theme of these very sumptuous, embellished, ruffled, crazy ball gowns with ornate headdresses and gloves and, you know, very all off the shoulder, you know, heaving bosoms and pearl necklaces and all that. So these are all the unifying elements. But within that, all, every single dress is different from each other in the way they use their colors and their fabrications and how the color blocking works. And this one has stripes and this one has beading and this one has extra ruffles and et cetera, et cetera. So each dress is actually all different from each other. And that's what you want in your illustration so that it kind of looks like you have a theme going on. You could have like a million different outfits, but let's say you stick to a beach theme. And so you have some girls in like denim cutoffs and bikini tops and some girls are in one piece bathing suits and big straw hats. So you can have like variety like that, but it still fits under a beach theme. And so that it looks like a cohesive illustration. Here's another one where this is a fashion collection from Manish Aurora. And you can see that you, he has fabrics that he's using over and over again, patterns. You have the pinks and the grays and um, the white and black in there. And you can see that he has really strong shoulders all the way across the collection. He's using these like little head ornamentations and identical shoes as kind of a unifying styling. The silhouettes are all close, fairly close to the body and narrow without it being bodycon. Okay, so unifying elements, but then everything is different. We have different lengths of skirts. We have a thin pant. We have a drapey pant. Okay, We have you know this print being used in a dress, once in a shirt, I can't tell if that's a dress or a two-piece, but whatever. And then we have a top, we have a pant, okay? Things like that. Unity and variety. So think about when you're designing your lineup, what are your unifying elements? And then how are you going to show variety and visual interest within your composition? When you are thinking about your composition, there are, like, there are a few things that really draw the eye in both positive and negative ways. And so you have to use that and your knowledge of that to get your eye to move across. You don't want people to just focus on one thing. You want people to look at all the things. So you wanna help their eye move. That's the whole point in learning how to compose things well, so that you're not stuck in one jarring place. So a few things that really uh, make the eye focus on one point, okay? Number one, the color red, bright blood red, okay? That's why stop signs and stop signal lights are red because it's the most eye-catching, the most contrasty, the, the most look-at-me color. And also think in terms of other pop colors, like if you wanted to put in a neon yellow, how you're gonna use that. Because if you have like a red dress here and nowhere else, people are just gonna look here. So if you want to use a really powerful color like red, consider sprinkling it across. Okay, in your well-merchandised fashion collection, you can have some red here, a little bit, you know, maybe her skirt is red. Maybe she has some red in a print in a blouse here. And then we skip a figure and maybe her mini skirt is red. And then we skip another two and then we have her in a red sheath dress. And then here she's using that red in the print again. So we're sprinkling the red and having the eye move across the illustration following the red. 
or following the neon yellow, the super crazy eye-catching color. Anytime there's text in an illustration, people are going to look at that first. Think about when you look at a fashion magazine, you know, when you open the editorial and there's text, usually the title of the editorial and who styled it and who photographed it. Most people will look at the text first. It's a natural inclination when you see an image with text to read the text to give you signs as to what you're looking at. And the natural inclination, just walk down the street, look at billboards and catch yourself. Don't try to force yourself to do something to prove your theory. Watch what you do, okay? So anytime there's text, people will tend to read it. And in an illustration like this, I mentioned before that I'm, if I like how this one turns out, that I might turn it into my banner art. Uh, for my channel and etc. And so maybe I will put my URL somewhere and you have to think about where strategically you're going to place that for it to be the most effective and the font and all these things. Alternatively, if you had text in the illustration, like if you had a bunch of graphic tees and you had, you know, logos or sayings on the t-shirts, people are going to want to read that. So maybe you have red, 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 and then you have a graphic T, graphic T, and then another one there. Sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. Faces are a big deal. You know, people like looking at faces. When people meet people for the first time, they tend to look at their faces first. <laughs> so I forget which video I was saying this in, but the two big cheats in fashion illustration are pop quiz. Those of you who watched that other video. Number one is line quality. With beautiful line quality, you can convince anyone that you know what you're doing. <laughs> And number two is faces. If you have a pretty face, you can get away with murder. That's like true of life. So make sure that your faces are pretty. That's why a lot of the time designers tend to not draw faces because they don't want attention on the face. They want attention on the clothes. Some people are just lazy and don't want to draw faces. Some people, it's a deliberate thing where it's like, no, look at this coat. Isn't it amazing? Look at this texture. Look at this rendering. Okay, about the face. It's a faceless person because I want lots of different faces to be wearing my amazing coat. Uh, the last point of emphasis I want to go over is areas of contrast. So anytime you have two things that are super contrasting next to each other, you're going to get the attention. So if you have something that's super, super sparkly, and then you have a black mat dress, this point where the contrast is happening is going to get the attention. If you have a section of three black dresses, black matte dresses, this does not get the attention. It's just like a sea of black. What do you think is gonna get more attention? A black and white striped blouse or a light blue and light pink striped blouse, okay? The black and white, the contrast, it's jarring, okay? It catches your eye. And so it makes you look there first. And so use these areas of contrast strategically. Speaking of contrast, that leads to the next thing I wanna talk about, which is value. For those of you who do not watch my color lesson series, shame on you, you should totally watch those. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding, but not really, but also I'm kidding, okay? Value studies. Value is the lightness or the darkness of a color back to our handy dandy color and design book. This one is available on Amazon. This was my old teaching copy, but uh, I do highly recommend it. I think it is a great book. And yeah, there's lots of text in here, but the text is very plain. Okay, it's not, a, if there's a lot of words you don't understand, it's because it's literally color and design vocabulary, not a bunch of fancy words to make the authors sound all intelligent. I hate it when authors do that. Value contrast and understanding how value contrast can help your illustration and design work, you know, with color blocking and usage of color and in prints and in your merchandising, all of that in graphic design is so immensely helpful. So basically with value, you have three keys, high key, middle key, and low key. And high key is, you know, the top third of your value scale, your lightest colors, Middle key is your middle colors. Low key is uh, your darkest colors. So there are three things that value does in illustration that I want to emphasize, okay? Number one, value creates form. Those of you 
who are familiar with my illustrative style know that typically I will take a color one shade darker than my base color and add shadows to create the form. Okay? This is natural grade three from the Copic series. So I'm gonna take a four and I'm going to, there, if that's my light source, I'm going to add shadows here. And when I add the shadows with the value, little in between the legs shadow, you're seeing it wrap around her hip and thigh. Using different values creates form. You see this robot guy, Without any help of line work, you're seeing the form. Like you see, that's the top of his chest where it comes up closer to the light. Okay, the top of the nose gets the highlight because it's closest to the light. But this divot in here is away from the light and deep into his face. And so it's very dark. Value creates composition. When you have something like this, where does your eye go? It goes here because of the high contrast, okay? Here, everything is a little bit more harmonious, and so you have less of a focal point. So back to the whole areas of contrast, creating emphasis and focal points, okay? That sort of thing. Here, in this one, your focus is in the center. Most people look at the center first. You're looking at the center of the X or the cross, and you're seeing the area of high contrast. And then the second thing you look at is this window, because again, it's another value contrast. It's like here, it's like, bam, your eye goes here, and then it goes over here where it's like, what is this window? And then you start looking elsewhere so that you can finish looking at the rest of the picture. Number three, value creates mood. This is a New Yorker illustration commemorating 9-11, and first, you see the high contrast text, you read that first. And then the overall mood of the illustration is very somber, it's all black and navy. And so excluding the text, the rest of it is extremely low key. And it really projects that incredibly somber mood of mourning. It's not about the navy being blue, it's about these dark colors that take over the entire illustration that create that mood, okay? Look at this one. This is all middle key. This is pretty depressing, okay? Uh, <laughs> like, this kind of looks like a robber ski mask, but I grew up in Alaska and people wore this for warmth, so I have, like, both good and bad connotations <laughs> with this kind of hat. But it's, like, crushed. It's on the ground. People have clearly walked all over it. You know, it's, it's a not great image. And in clothing, you can see how these uh, outfits that are almost entirely black, they create that goth look. They project a particular image that is practically the opposite of this image of the girl wearing high key, white, baby blue and white pinstripe, a uh, little white on top, okay? Little white socks. That's the thing in Japan, is nobody shows their toes. If they wear an open toe shoe, they always wear socks. This creates a very goth, dark, maybe more edgy, aggressive look, and this creates like a baby doll, cutesy, innocent look. So just using the values, you can create different moods. We're gonna take those three concepts and apply them to our composition here. So what I did here was I scanned in the image that I drew and I printed them out really small so that I could do some value studies. So what is the mood that I wanna create with this lineup? Okay, let's try a high key effect. Maybe I want everything to be white and baby pink and peach and yellow and soft pastel tones and I do want things to be progressively a little bit darker as I go, again, creating that depth perception. Let's say I have a very high key lineup of dresses, and then I have to think about the skin tone, okay? Because here's the thing, it's like, if I have a bunch of pink and peach and yellow dresses and I put them on really pale girls with blonde hair on a white background, what are you looking at, really? 
It's just gonna be a sea of light colors. Nothing is gonna really come out. It's gonna be very much a background thing, something very easily ignored, right? And so you wanna create a, at least a little bit of contrast to catch the eye. So something like this, I would at least use some medium skin tone values especially in the front. You don't want maybe like a jarring contrast, but you do want some contrast, okay? You ever notice like how tan girls look so amazing in white and really pale girls look so amazing in black? That contrast really makes your clothes stand out. So you do want a little bit of contrast. And here, you know, you can make them really pale because they have a little bit uh, darker clothes and then maybe even take a slightly darker color and add in some darker hair okay doesn't have to be every single one but kind of bring that through so you're seeing a little bit of more visual interest but you're still keeping things nice and light and that creates one kind of mood you know alternatively we could do the opposite we could do something more low-key the closer something is to you, the more high contrast the values get, and the further things get away from you, the more, less contrast. You notice when you're like looking out across a field and you see mountains and trees, and you notice how the colors start blurring together, um, the mountain and the trees, like they're not bright green and brilliant brown and purple, but kind of all duller and dimmer and closer together in value. That's just naturally how it is okay so the further something is away the less of a contrast it's automatically going to have okay and again i like contrasting skin tones i think they really work to create a contrast that's not jarring where it's not it doesn't look jumpy you can have like a little bit of contrast medium brown native american uh Latina skin tone and get a little bit more contrasty there. A little less contrasty with the lighter value. Oh, I forgot to give her a shirt. Let's do that. <laughs> so a bit less contrast as you go. I feel like the black is kind of jumpy there. So I'm going to just add a few more dark elements to make things look more cohesive. So here is a more, much more low key composition. And so look at it, okay? Is this the look you're going for? Light, airy, soft, bright, or are you thinking more somber, urbane, slick maybe? You can create these different moods and compositions. What have we learned? We're creating moods we're creating compositions. You don't wanna cluster something too much the same and then have it look really choppy. So as long as you follow the values, the actual colors don't matter. You can make them navy and black and dark green and burgundy, whatever you want, right? The value will create the mood. I actually had an idea for what I wanted to do. Cause you know, I've been doing this sort of thing for a minute. So I kind of had this planned in my mind. I really wanted to push the depth perception even more by really push the value as well, okay? And really create that depth perception. And I do love a nice contrasting skin tone. Now the thing is, again, as I mentioned before, as you get further away into space, there's gonna be less contrast, right? And so I am also playing up that idea while also making the models lighter in contrast with the darker fabrics that they are wearing, like so. So playing with the depth, I'm gonna go with something like this. Last thing I wanna touch on in terms of designing for illustration purposes is when you have these images, these like four, okay, especially this one, you know how, um, in runway shows. That first model is so important because it gives the impression for the whole show, first impressions and all that. And so designers spend a lot of time thinking about what is gonna be that amazing thing that comes out first. 
and which amazing model is going to come out in that outfit. And sure, right now, this is the finale walk, so that's not the same exact thing. But one last thing in terms of composition, when you speak a language, if you're, when your culture speaks a language that is read left to right, you tend to also look at images left to right because that's how you're used to looking at everything. So if you speak a language where you read left to right, chances are you look at paintings and illustrations and billboards left to right as well. And I have the largest figure on the left-hand side. She's gonna have the most detail. She's gonna be looked at first. And so I have to make sure that this outfit is the bomb, the best one, the most amazing one, okay? These three, because you can see so much of them because they're more spaced out and they're bigger, these are gonna be important images where I'm gonna have the most detailed, the most, the, I mean, obviously I'm gonna to try to make everything look beautiful, but the most detailed, the most fine-tuned design, um, it's really like really to show off detail. That would be the focus here. Here, and I mentioned before that I'm going to stack these even closer together because I think they're too far apart right now, but they're going to be stacked together. The details, like beading patterns and seaming and things, those are not going to be as important. Things get less contrasty as you go. Things get a little bit more blurry. And so I'm going to try to capture that by focusing on really interesting and dramatic shapes in the clothes. You know, something like this, maybe I have a very intricate pearl and beading pattern along the bodice and then some cool seams in the skirt. But something like this, maybe I really focus on having a really elaborate sleeve with tiers of ruffles and it's really about the shape and not the seams. So different things to focus on depending on the placement. Again, going back to the idea of areas of contrast, creating composition and flow, even if these are gonna be the designs that focus on the most detail and embellishment, I'm not gonna just put all my sparkle here and then forget about it back here. Otherwise, your eye will not move across the illustration. I'll have some here, some here, some here, and then a little bit here and a little bit here, so it still flows all the way through. That's all I got for y'all today. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Give me a thumbs up if it was. Questions, comments, drop them below. Share, subscribe, all those beautiful things. Hashtag, always be practicing. Hashtag, practice not magic. Hashtag, if your first one sucks, you're right on track. I've been getting a lot of comments lately on the perfection thing again, and I would like to reiterate, perfectionism is stupid. And perfectionism is the opposite of getting stuff done. And if you need a refresher, go watch my perfectionism is stupid videos they are in it their own playlist all right so go have fun design some stuff where you don't have to worry about the construction and it's just all a matter of play and fun and i will see you in the next video